In the early days of transportation, conditions on board ship were terrible and many people died on the journey, which took between four and six months. Towards the mid-19th century, things had improved and examinations of the transport records indicate that, numbers, that the numbers who perished on the voyage was low. Many of the convicts who were sent to New South Wales in the early years were already disease-ridden and many died from typhoid and cholera. Those that survived were severely weakened by scurvy, dysentery and fever. There were many cases of seasickness and stomach upsets and occasional measles. However, the ships were kept reasonably clean and the surgeons did their job well enough. The convict quarters were ventilated to let in light and air. The port end would be reasonably light, but the bow dark and gloomy. On some ships in the early days, convicts were kept below most of the time, and in many cases they were restrained in chains and were only allowed on deck for fresh air and exercise. The cramped, unhygienic conditions on the convict ships were very difficult. As the 19th century progressed, the conditions began to improve. By the 1840s, the routine was more enlightened. The filthy conditions gave way to a more ordered layout as described by John Acton Roth, a literate young man who was transported in the 1840s. He described an area with bunks along each side of the deck, each separated from its neighbour by a 10 inch high board. Those men occupying midships slept in hammocks, hung up each night over the tables. Each bed had a mattress, pillow and two blankets. The hammocks had two blankets only. I, Francis Greenway, am an architect. I was born near Bristol in the small town of Mangotsfield. I have come from a long line of stonemasons, builders and architects, including my parents, Francis Greenway and Annie Webb. My architectural practice was located in Bristol and I lived a pretty successful life until I was found guilty of forging a document. Sentenced to death, I was a victim of the harsh British punishment system, but the law is the law. A small reprieve came when I was instead transported for 14 years, possibly a sentence worse than death. Back then I thought that this would be the end of the strong Greenway family tradition, but to my surprise a reprieve came along to me. Arriving in Sydney in February 1814 with my transport boat, General Hewitt, I very much hoped that my wife, Mary, and three kids would follow shortly after me. To my surprise, much freedom was given to me upon my arrival, for I was needed as an architect. Starting a private practice immediately on 84 George Street, I was willing to take all types of commissions. I made many enemies due to my harsh criticism. I have, however, kept in line for the sake of my family and myself. Since then, I have been appointed civil architect and assistant engineer. For this job, I paid three shillings a day, quarters for myself and my family, as well as a horse. I have been in charge of designing many buildings in my new appointment, including the Macquarie Tower, located in Port Jackson, and a new government house. For all my work, I have become a reasonably well-known man, with many new productions also underway, including large female factory and a large compound for convicts. Possibly my most famous work, is St. Matthew's Church in Windsor, which thankfully is still staying. However, my life was not to be a smooth transition here in Sydney. In 1819, Commissioner John Thomas Bick was sent to check on the colony issues. He was very critical on the issue of the time and money used in the public works, terming them as unnecessary and ambitious. He attributed my work positively, but he said my style was often insolent and arrogant, which was not of the liking to the superiors. On my arrival, my relationship with Macquarie disintegrated, as Big disintegrated any of my architectural designs and cut out our communication with the governor. The bad relationship between the governor and Big went on to break down any progress the governor had done completely. I was dismissed from my post in November 1822. I gave up on my passion as I continued to do my architectural activities. I did not achieve the same success as before while working with the governor. The reason for my little success after being dismissed was maybe due to my abrasive nature. I am a man who always seeks my work as complete and perfect, and I did not like being given suggestions on what to improve in my designs. Francis Greenway died in September 1837 due to typhoid fever, and is believed to be buried in East Maitland, but his grave is unmarked. 
Francis Greenway has well and truly forged the way for architecture in Australia and definitely was one of the most successful convicts of his time. I was standing on the edge I'd hung for a new beginning But I couldn't look down No, I couldn't look down I'm a coward A million voices screamed in my head